the red pill and religion. If you're watching this video, you've likely uh, taken the red pill in the last few weeks, months, year, etc. And you're wondering, how does this fit in into religion? Maybe you've seen Rolo Tomasi's video and other videos out there discussing this very topic. Maybe you're wondering how it is that your desire for sex or multiple relationships or an open relationship or understanding where monogamy is, finding your partner, that it, maybe you just want a partner like in the old days where it's monogamous and she's a good catch and isn't looking to just screw you over and divorce you and take half your shit and keep the kids and leave you out in the cold and be what's known as zeroed out. Potentially, you're watching this video for that reason. Whatever the reason, know that I, myself, am a Christian and I also meditate, so I am a Christian yogi. If you've never heard of such a thing, that's fine. I'm not looking to uh, impress you. I'm just exposing who I am, who you're looking at. My name is Jacob Adams. I'm a fitness and leadership coach. I help people just like you get to the next level. In the gym, by burning body fat, building muscle, getting personal records, dialing in on nutrition, supplementation programs. Here on YouTube, I like to cover everything that helps a man, people, uh, get to the next level by developing perspectives, shifting the mind, and dialing in on the right thoughts that lead to the right behaviors and strategies to get to the next level. You know, have you been struggling with the red pill that you consumed, the philosophy, the knowledge that it woke you up to understand, and now you're kind of at a at a loss. What does this mean? What church do you go to? Or does your church want you to speak about this? Because the emotions that the red pill awakens are powerful. Would you agree? If you've consumed the philosophy of the red pill, would you agree that all of a sudden you see the power dynamics around you? You see the feminine imperative, the female imperative around you and how you and your life is somewhat more trivial than that of women around you. You're expected to go to war and fight if that ever comes. You're expected to kill yourself. If you have kids, you're expected to supply for the kids. And if ever there was a divorce, you're expected to just swallow the fact that she's going to probably get the kids and she's going to get more custody. You're going to have to be hey, alimony and all kinds of things that you're going to be expected to just take as a man. That's the world we live in. I myself, struggle with these concepts in every day, when it's specifically the red pill and religion, uh, because like I said, I am a Christian, I do meditate, and I search for God in my heart, meaning to connect to God in my heart on a daily basis. Now that said, friends invite me sometimes to church, whether it's my friend Fernando, for example, and he'll say, well, come to church. And, you know, and that's great. This is, maybe another friend will invite me like, Jacob, why don't you go to church? And it's, it's hard to tell them sometimes that, listen, a lot of the patrons that go to your church uh, that are paying the tithes to that building, to that, you know, corporation of sorts, are women. And since they're women, the message is being catered to them and what they want and what they need and not so much what I and you as a man need. It's more becoming a feminine imperative even in church. Hmm. So the way this cracks down, and I had a friend, I, I literally saw this happen with a friend. She was dating some guy with tattoos and whatnot, and super in love with him, saying all these things, and he broke up with her for whatever reason, wasn't a good reason, I don't care, but he broke up with her. And within you know 30 days or so, she had joined a church, and that church was uh, like, she said, like, I'm gonna find the man that, that I'm gonna marry here at this church. And she won't, She joined this little like group of women who were there to get married. 
And that, to me, was with t someone that had taken the red pill, I completely saw it for what it was. Because I literally saw the breakdown. I saw, okay, so there's a guy that broke up with her. It's like a guy that she really wants to have sex with. She really wants him, but it didn't work out. So now she's here at church and she just wants somebody to go ahead and marry her then. I told her, look, that's a cult. I mean, now I've been part of a cult, so I, I wasn't trying to throw shade. I just said, well, that particular, you know, solidification that you're going to marry the man that you, that you're going to marry is going to come out of that building, that little, you know, however, you know, 5,000 square foot building. He has to come from that building. Well, that's a bit of a cult. She was upset at me. And I said, listen, if you follow through with this concept of getting married with a man in your church, I will be impressed. She said, you should be proud. I go, well, you know, be impressed. Same difference. Within 30 days or so, she was back with her original or the ex-boyfriend. She got back with him and she's happy. You know, I remember telling her on the phone, I go, you know why people, you know why guys leave you? I go, because you're trying to control them too much. And at that time, now this is, this is what I'm literally thinking to myself. She hasn't been talking to me lately. You know, she's happy with him or whatever, and I'm happy for her. And what I think she did was, that even though I upset her and triggered her and pissed her off, I think that she probably took a moment and said, son of a bitch, as much as I hate Jacob, he's probably right. I'm being a little bit of a control freak, and that's why this guy wants to break up with me, and that's why guys want to break up with me. And I'm thinking, she probably wised up and chilled the fuck out a bit, and now the relationship seems to be working. Look, you hate me, you can love me, I don't give a shit. Like I said, I don't need, I'm not charging you to hear this. You, this is, you could tune me out at any second. What, what, what you can count on is that that did happen. That is a true story. And like before God, all those are facts, meaning the situation, the timeline, the way it broke down, 30 days here, 30 days there, the person, what I told her, what's, I don't know if she's living happily ever after that part, I keep, that's an opinion, but it seems to be working out. And I did tell her, you're trying to control him, trying to control people too much. And I'm thinking since they're working out, she probably kind of chilled the fuck out on that. In any case, I, I it, this situation of people, what's the word, of churches looking to make men get married to women in the congregation because now these women are ready to settle down. In other words, because they weren't able to get with a guy they really want, some guy they really want to fuck, now the church is wanting people like you and me that are Christians to go to that church and then say, well, this is our, this is our group of women that are here, so we want you to pick from these. And then the, the timeline goes, well, since you met at church and you're there, for example, in this example, the, the outcome they're looking to do is to, for you and her to be in that church. And since it worked out for her, it was a good deal for her, you know, she will continue to pay the tithes and the church is happy and she's happy. And the ideas that they will give you as the leader or, or as a person are going to be to be in without, without the, just to be, just to kind of cut to the chase here, uh, a pussified watered down doctrine of being a man so that you won't stir the boat so that the feminine imperative, the feminist movement on some level can, can reign supreme in your home. And if she wants to divorce you, fuck it. If she wants to do whatever the fuck she wants, fuck it. It's, it's not important because it's your feelings and your thoughts and what you truly want as a man is irrelevant to the overall agenda of the feminist movement, to the overall agenda in this particular situation of this hypothetical church. But this hypothetical church that I'm speaking of is pretty common. This is, this is, this is not the exception. This is the rule of general Protestant churches, congregations in the world. And so I don't go to churches for that one reason alone. There's also my distaste for the one-upping, they're leveling up, the one-upping that men do amongst each other in like these holier-than-thou type situations that disgust me or when men try to throw scripture at other men, uh, like, hey, you know what, you know, I'm, 
holier than thou because this and that and it just it's i'm just i just don't it doesn't even feel good it feels disgusting to me in any case i'm going to read to you uh genesis chapter 3 16 it said 316 genesis 316 to the woman he said i will greatly increase your pangs and childbearing in pain you shall bring forth children yet your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. And to the man he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. <sighs> Genesis 3.22 Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. And now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. There's a lot said there. And so me as a yogi, somebody that has pra practiced and studied esoteric teachings, esoteric teachings, I'm going to do my best to break that down for you. Uh, like I said, I'm a yogi Christian, meaning I am a Christian. And yet through the teachings of Yogananda and other teachers, I can break down this scripture for you to the best of my understanding. Please, if you want to just if you hate that I'm, if you hate what I'm about to tell you, please understand, I'm totally okay with it. Okay, so he says I'm going to increase your your childbearing pains, and that's fine. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. So right there, he's saying because so God is saying that he's placing the man in a leadership role over the woman, and see the feminist movement is consistently looking to overthrow that law. It's a, it's a curse. You see, the, the female energy seduced Adam into eating of the tree of life. Now, the tree of life has been spoken of to be her sexual organs. You could say her genitals, the, the, the tree of life. And so when he ate of the tree, she, he was seduced by his emotions, which is Eve. Eve stands for the emotional aspect of humanity. Adam stands for the logical aspect of humanity. That's why it's been said that men have bigger foreheads than women because of the over the logic, the brain has more focus on the actual rationality of what it is to be a man. Women have bigger chests because that is the emotional aspect or the loving nature or everything that is emotional to the humanity. So you could say women are more emotional creatures, men more logical, bigger foreheads, bigger chests. Now, continuing. See, these are not things we're living in a society where what I'm saying is it, it can ruffle some feathers, yet I'm telling it to you so you can so it can clarify the simplicity that is humans. The media, the uh, the liberals, this whole like thing of men can be women and women can be men and it doesn't matter and all this shit. All that is designed to destroy family structure so that we can count on the government more because if the family structure is broken it can make it so that you don't count on your family as much and so that leaves you to only count on the government okay so this this is called social engineering what they're looking to do to brainwash people into believing that men could just be women because they say so okay what i'm reading to you in genesis this is where the female imperative and the feminist movement doesn't like that part. You see, you shall 
In other words, and he shall rule over you, Genesis 3.16. As a matter of fact, I can, you can post that on, on your social media and see what happens. Genesis 3.16, and he shall rule over you. Now, this video is going to go longer than my typical videos because it's, it's quite powerful. It's quite long, and it's, it's coming from a really deep place, okay? And to the man, he says, because you have listened to your vo the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, keep in mind that when God... When God gets them, he, when God first gets them, he goes, who told, Genesis 3.11, he says, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Okay, so you, you understand there that that right there is all clues to that. Like, who told you that you are naked? In other words, the knowledge. See, it's, they were already naked even before they ate the fruit they were already naked the only thing that's shifted is the shift the shift came when they realized they were naked after eating the fruit now the serpent has been linked to sexual energy meaning the energy came down from Adam's mind into his body. So the energy, the creative energy came down from his mind into his body. The woman was already there. The woman was already more conducive to that. So you could say her sexual energy was already more in her body. It's been said, for example, that women are actually more sexual beings than men. Now, some people may not like that, whatever, whatever. It's just like saying that they're more conducive to picking up sexual vibes. There you go. Women can be more conducive to picking up a sexual vibe. So the sexual energy stirred within Eve. She gave into that and then helped seduce Adam into that same energy. And together they ate of the tree of life and then became aware of their nudity. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Again, I've known this for years. I've thought this for years. I've spoken about it a few times, but now you're getting to hear it broken down a little bit slower than on some videos I've made on Facebook and stuff like this. Okay. So in any case, where, where are we? So this feminine movement this whole thing, the, fem the female imperative, is primarily trying to s submit man, trying to get certain men to, to submit to the female body, the female wishes. Like, and if they don't, they're not given what they want, well, they are willing to make men not get sex, for example. That is the agenda. Like, let's not give them sex till we're in power, we're in control. Again, because going back to the Bible, they, it's not, they don't like this curse. Like the female, the female, female creatures do not like this curse that they were given back in the origins of time in Genesis. So now in modern, in modern churches, how fucked up is it that this is no longer taught? This is no longer what is being taught, that man is the head of the household. That isn't going to be taught in modern Christianity, in modern religion, because it's not going to get what's known as meat in the seats. In other words, all that women have to do is go to a place where that's not being taught. Because if it's being taught that men, biblically speaking, are the head of the household, are the leaders and men are to rule over their wives, they're not going to want that as a whole, as a majority. There are many women that do like that and do want that and need that. But if they can trick a guy by their own, by their manipulative nature, 
In other words, understand this was this was a this was a, a seduction. If by with their manipulative nature, they can get a man to do what she wants. Again, just like it happened in the Garden of Eden, she got the man to eat the apple. With that same nature that existed back then, if she can get him to do what he wants still to this day, then he man once again can in in essence disobey like his own his own nature. He's almost disobeying the order of God. Does it make sense? And so this is why I don't go to church. This you're you're now understanding why I don't go to church is because it's not even it doesn't feel like a like a real organic place for me as a man to find order. It feels like my life has way more order than a church and it shouldn't be that way like a church building i should not feel like my life has far more order than like a church building like you the philosophies in there are a little skewed so one of my coaches told me he had a podcast and it was known as he named it the church is broken and i can now i can now see why how i agree with that i can now see how the church is broken and so that's that's my current position right now when the video cuts off it's going to go to the next video so i'm just waiting for it to sort of clip so just be a little patient it's going to happen at any second now so so far i've told you about how